let's create some fabrics now. So first, let's make a very simple plain cotton material. So look at this reference image. You can see that the texture has this uh, fabric pattern, natural fabric pattern. So what we're going to do, we're going to try and find some nice fabric photographs that we can use to create a texture. So go to Google image search and try to find, let's say, cotton fabric. So here are the images. This is pretty decent, I guess. Well, not gonna work. The photo is very skewed. Okay, let's let's look for large photos first. Let's look at this one. Too blurry. How about this? Okay, this looks pretty decent. It has a pattern to it. Uh, let's try to create a texture. So copy the image, go to the Photoshop and create a new image file. Okay, let's paste it. And let's use the crop tool. to enlarge our canvas like this. Let's try for a square, square texture. Okay. Copy everything, paste and move down here. Let's try to blend it together so there is no visible seam. The pattern is pretty busy so the seams won't be too noticeable. So for fabrics it's better to use a brush with high hardness. So I'm going to erase the border of this overlying layer with a very hard brush. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to show you what happens if you use a soft brush. You have this pretty visible blurry edge happening. So it's better to use a hard brush for this sort of uh, very sharp pattern. Okay, merge down. Let's offset it to see the seams. The seams are not too visible, but let's try to fix them. Okay, paste again. And just delete to blend them together like this. The pattern is very busy, so it will not be too noticeable if you make some some slight mistakes or the seams are visible. Let's use the clone stamp tool with a 100% hardness now. Just to break up the seam a bit. It's not going to be perfect, but still, I think it's going to be pretty usable. Okay. So merge it down and let's give it some color now. Create a new layer, select the paint bucket tool and choose a nice color. Let's try something like this. Okay, now I'll try different blending modes to see something you like. OK. 
Okay, let's try this one. So let's save our texture. Save as PNG to save the maximum amount of detail. And let's try fabric one. Okay. So while we're at it, let's save this black and white version as well. I'll use it as our bump map. Let's increase the contrast a bit. and save. Ok, let's test it out in our scene. So here is a pretty simple scene, rendered with the V-Ray default material. It's just some cloth thrown on uh, some objects and tangled around, just to demonstrate the cloth from different angles. Okay, so let's create a new V-Ray material now. And assign our diffuse map. So let's use the color texture we created. And here it is. Let's say it in viewport. Okay, so let's increase the tiling a bit. The pattern should be pretty small. Perhaps something like this. Okay, let's see how it looks with just a diffuse texture. First, let's change the filtering type to some area for sharper details. And let's render. So, so far it looks pretty flat. Let's try to add our bump map. So remember the tiling, it's 6x6. Six six. And we'll use the same for our bump. Try a higher value like 100. Okay, looking better. So, what I've found is that to give uh, added realism to fabric materials you have to use fall of map in the diffuse slot. Uh, the way we use it is by creating a lighter version of our diffuse texture and using it on these edges here I'm showing. So basically the parts that are facing you use the default texture and the parts that are facing like this perpendicularly are using the lighter version. So this this creates an illusion of a fuzzy edge like fabric often has. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, go to your diffuse slot, click on the bitmap and change it to fall off. Make sure you keep the old map as submap. And let's copy it to to the second fall of slot. Okay. 
So once it's in the second slot, let's mix it with the white color. So this will make it lighter as well as keep, us, keep the pattern of fabric. Okay, so now you can see the front parts are, are using the default texture and the parts that are facing away from you are using the lighter version. So let's try the towards away fall off type and adjust the curves to have this effect only on the very edge of the material. Okay. Maybe let's make it even whiter. Okay, I'm going to use pure white for now just to see the effect in action. Okay, like this. And let's try it 50. So here's our previous render, let's save it and re-render with the fall in diffuse slot. Notice this edge over here, you can clearly see a small white highlight on the very edge. So this is the work of fall of map in our diffuse slot. The effect is pretty slight, but you can still notice it. So let's save it and compare. So with fall off and without. With and without. The effect is pretty slight, but it gives the fabric a softer appearance. You can make it even stronger. If you choose the perpendicular parallel fall of type, create an even lighter, lighter mix, let's try 20. Okay, so this is a much stronger effect. The fabric appears to be much softer, fluffier what have you. So another thing you can do to increase the realism of your fabric materials is create a custom bump map that simulates folds and wrinkles in the fabric. Okay, so this is with fall off, this is without fall off at all. Notice how much softer this appears. Okay, let's try, let's try and create our crease and fold map in Photoshop. So go to Photoshop, create a new file. I'm going to use 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels. So I'm going to use my Wacom tablet. So create a new layer and fill it with neutral gray. That's 128, 128 and 128. Fill, create another layer, select your brush tool, let's use a low hardness value and large diameter, and a white color. So I'm going to try and draw some wrinkles and large folds so I will start by creating the larger, the larger folds. Just draw them randomly like a pattern in fabric. Okay, like this. Let's blur the whole layer like this. Okay, good decrease the opacity a bit like this, okay. Create a new layer, select 
select the black color and create some more more dips in the surface blur everything together and let's offset the image to see the seams so 50 by 750 okay let's use the clone stamp tool with low hardness and fill these seams right in just trying to get rid of the hard edges of seams. Okay, so that's a nice base. Now let's start to create some more detailed wrinkles. Select the white color, decrease the diameter of your brush. And let's reduce the opacity. I'm just drawing these wrinkles in layers like this. Use multiple strokes to overlay the effect and create a stronger white. Don't worry if they're not perfect, we're still gonna blur. Let's blur it. Good. Use the so first merge it down and use the offset filter again. Just painting over the seams here picking a color and painting over. Okay. Okay, let's try to draw some black folds for the deeper part. You can try different diameters for your brush.
blur again. Okay. Merge down and offset again. Okay. Let's draw some smaller lines on this layer. And blur. Okay. Okay, let's try and see how it looks. Let's go back to our fabric material and let's try to mix our bump with the image we just created. So I change this texture type to mix, keep old map as submap, and select the false texture. Okay, let's see it in viewport and increase the tiling. Perhaps stretch it out a bit like this. Okay, let's mix it at 50 for now. And try a higher bump value just to see the effect better. Render. Notice these folds over here. They usually make the fabric appear much more interesting than if it were simply flat. So this sort of bump map is very useful for things like chairs, sofas and other upholstered furniture. Makes it seem much more interesting than if everything was simply flat. So the effect here is probably a bit too strong. We can go back to 100 as our bump value. Okay, too weak now. 
Let's leave it at 150. So that's how you create a soft fabric material. So let's rename it to soft fabric. Okay, let's make a copy. And now I'm going to show you how to create a velvet material. It uses the same principle we just used on this material, but even more exaggerated and stronger. So look at this photograph. The front parts of fabric are very, very dark, while those that are facing away from you are intensely colored and much brighter. So that's the basic idea of velvet material. Notice here as well the light edge and the strong color that is facing you. So let's create a velvet material. Your name assigned to our object and let's disable the bump for now okay go to the diffuse slot get rid of the textures from these slots and let's reset the curve like it was before okay like this So this is how it looks with the default settings. Okay, render. So what we want to do is make these edges much, much brighter than the basic color. So first set up our basic color. Let's try some deep purple. Like this. And let's make the edges lighter, less saturated color. Okay. So now go to the mix curve and adjust it so the effect is only seen on these edges. Perhaps something like this. Okay, this already looks pretty velvety to me. Maybe the effect is too strong. You can add some more points to control the curve better. For example, I'm going to add the point here. So now there is a larger difference between the fall of lighter color and darker. Let's make it even darker like this. Okay, so this is a pretty basic diffuse map for a velvet material. You can change the colors to get different colored velvet. So now let's try to enable our bump map. So first, let's try it how it is.
I notice how this fabric pattern is not working with velvet at all. It's too sharp, too large. So we're going to leave the folds map where it is and change the fabric bump to a cellular map to give a speckled appearance to this material. So I'm going to change the cell colors like this and reduce the cell size a lot. Something very very tiny. So the fabric now appears to be fuzzy from the small cellular bumps that it has. So if you look at some reference images of velvet, it is pretty fuzzy. In fact, it is what causes velvet to look like velvet. So okay, that's some basic velvet material. You can change the colors to pretty much anything you like. For example, let's set up a green velvet. And here it is. Okay. Another tricky material is silk. So I got some reference images here. For example, let's look at this one here. Has a nice tranquil quality to it. It looks pretty shiny. I've tried in the past to replicate this look by using the reflect section of V-ray material, but the effects were always not quite there, not satisfactory. So I've developed a new, well perhaps not new, but a different method to create this silk effect. So let's first look at this image here. Uh, I'm going to replicate the silk effect using a fall of map and I will not be using a reflect map at all. So how this works? Look how the silk changes appearance depending on at what angle it's facing you. So notice that there is a pretty sharp highlight that's visible on all the folds. And there is a darker color and everything between. So the way you do this is by using the fall of curve. So let's create a new weary material and assign a fall of map to the diffuse slot. Let's change it to towards the way, perhaps flip around. And now let's try to replicate the curve of silk highlights. So first I'm setting everything to dark. And now I will add some points. So what I found is that the most effective way to create this highlight is not by making <coughs> it appear in this higher higher point here I mean the center but instead make it slightly offset to the right so add a couple of more points here make them smooth I notice the sharp highlight here I've just created. Hard 
to get these points. Okay. Perhaps something like this. Let's try it out. So perhaps the effect is a bit too strong. This already looks like a gray silk material. Actually pretty close to this one here, except for the color. And it renders very fast. You don't need to mess with the reflection settings at all. Well, this method is fake, but it works pretty well. Okay, to change the colors, simply go up and change these colors. For example, if you want a blue base color with purple highlights, you can do that here, like this. Very nice. You have very great control over the colors. And you're not limited to just simple, um, let's say, green darker color and green lighter color. You can mix and match whatever you want. There are many different fabrics that have some weird colors going on, like, for example, this one here. It has blue highlights and some purples and some blues. So let's set up blue highlights. Swap that around. Okay. So then there is the purple. And to make the last part dark blue, like here, you can assign another fall of map in the slot. Copy the purple first, paste, and change the second color to dark blue. Like this. Nothing much to it. Okay, look at it. We have a three color fall off now going on. Perhaps I've exaggerated the color differences a bit too much. But you get the basic idea. You can play around with colors, with curves. You get very many different effects of shiny fabrics like silk. For most materials, it's enough to use one simple fall of map with two colors. Usually one darker and one lighter. Okay, so that's a basic silk material. So let's look at some advanced silks. For example, this one here. It's composed of two different two different silks. The highlights are playing nicely with the light. For example, here's a damask pattern. Let's open it up. So here this part is lighter and here it is darker than the background. That's an interesting color change. So you can simulate that like this. Uh, let's copy this material first. Drag and drop. 
name to silk damask. So the basic idea is this. We're going to copy our diffuse map and change change it from fall off to mix. Keep the old map as submap and paste in the second slot. So now we have our two fall off maps in two different mix slots. So what I'm going to do is go to the second slot and offset the highlights to the right. Just select these points and move them to the right. Okay, you can't see it now because it's not using any mix amount. So I'm going to use a simple damask texture like this. Let's see it first in the viewport. So back to our fall off map. So it looks like I've shifted it a bit too far. Let's move it a bit closer. And maybe bring this down. Like this. The idea is to create two different fall of patterns to show off the damask texture. So notice how the shininess of material is changing depending on the angle you're seeing it. Just like real damask silk. There are no rules on how the fall of curve should be constructed. So I usually just go by eye, look for what looks best for me. Basically just play around with the curves and the colors and try to find something you like. So that's it, that's how you create a damask silk material. So you can make the difference very subtle, or you can make it very strong. Here is a very very subtle offset of fall of curve. Just enough to show off the pattern. Notice, notice how it's barely visible. So uh, as your pattern you can use any black and white texture you have. You can draw a new one, you can create one from photographs, or you can use some from texture collections. It's your choice. So that's it. Let's leave it like this. So another fabric I want to show you is crushed velvet. Ok, 
Okay, I'm going to find an example. Here it is. Just like the regular levelet, but with some sharp, sharp patterns on it that are much brighter. So let's copy this here. Rename to Velvet Crushed and assign to our material. Okay. So what I'm going to do is blend this material with another V-Ray material. Sorry. So I'll we'll change it to V-Ray Blend Material, keep it as Submaterial, and copy to the second slot. Okay. So for blend amount, I have a nice patchy texture prepared. Guess it's this one. And let's increase the tiling a bit. Okay, so now we have the same material in both base and code slots, and let's change the code material properties. Go to the diffuse and let's change the curve to be much brighter. Something like this. So now we have the regular velvet and the shiny version mixed together with the patchy bitmap, which creates a nice crushed velvet look. It's very common on luxury furniture, sofas and so on. There is actually no need to use V-Ray Blend material, you could achieve the same effect by using the mix map in the diffuse slot. So I just wanted to show you that you can use many approaches to get the same result. Okay, let's get back to our basic, basic fabric. So here it is. I'm going to show you how to give it some volume, some um, 3D pattern. So copy it to another slot. And let's rename it. So for example, I want to make it stripey. So I could use the bump map, but the results would not be as nice as if I would use the displacement map. So I'm going to create a new displacement map. Let's try 1000 by 1000. Create a new layer. and simply draw some vertical lines with a soft brush. Okay, let's fix the opacity. Well, not completely soft, but let's say 50% soft brush. Let's blur it for smoother transitions. Okay, something like this. So the black part will go in and the white part will go out or up. Copy the layer merge down, copy both of them, merge down and copy again. Okay. Like this. Okay, now I'm going to transform it to fit the width of my texture. And let's save it as 
stripes. So I'm going to go to my display slot and use this bitmap in here. So let's preview it and increase the tiling. So a bit more. Uh, let's make it a bit wider. So the white part is the same as the rest of them. Okay, resave. That looks better. Strap 20. By 20. Let's try a low value first. So it's taking a bit longer to calculate. Okay, I can already see that this is too strong. Let's try it at one. So that's a basic fabric with some 3D displacement can create many different images. Stripes, squares, circles, complicated pattern patterns, whatever you need. It's a nice effect. Okay. Now how about an advanced fabric? Perhaps something like this here. So there are soft velvety parts here on a background of a silk material. And the soft velvety parts are also uh, bumped out or look here you can see these borders they are not on the same level. So how do we create this? First, we need to create two different materials. First, it is beige velvet, and second, in is this yellow or gold silk material. So let's do that. Let's create a gold silk. So it's pretty simple. Just look at the reference image, find the darkest color, something greenish yellow like this and look at the brightest color it's a nice saturated yellow perhaps something like this let's try it out make the dark part a bit darker and shift the hue to the left a little bit. Okay, and give more saturation to the brightest color. Okay, for example, something like this. So that's one of our materials. Perhaps let's give it some bump. Let's use the texture we created. See how it looks in the viewport and fix the tiling. stretching it out a bit.
I'm a mess. Let's try a high value. Okay, I guess the tiling is a bit too too strong. Let's try like this. I noticed the nice fabric like pattern in the bump. So that's for our silk material. Just change the bit more filtering to some area and see how that looks. I know I think the previous previous version was better so change that back and now let's create this beige silk not silk but beige velvet velvet beige so the color is again pretty simple something like medium brown And going to light, very light, almost white beige, like this. Maybe give it a bit more yellow tint. Okay, let's try and see how it looks on our fabric and that's pretty nice so now we're going to combine these two materials with a V-Ray blend material so let's create a new V-Ray blend material and drag and drop First the silk material in the base slot. Okay, let's set it up as instance. And now the velvet material in the coat material slot. Okay, instance again. So now it's simply blending it at 50%. This is not at all what we want. We want to use a texture for this. I'm going to use the same damask texture as in our previous damask silk example. And increase the tiling to 5 by 5 okay so now it's blending the velvet and silk together in a single material okay the only thing is it's flipped around the parts that should be velvet are silk and the parts that should be silk are velvet we can fix that by checking this invert checkbox in the output section like this okay looking better so this is a basic blend but to make it better we're going to use a bump map to bring these velvety parts up from the level of silk. So how do we do that? Very simple. Copy this bitmap from the blend amount slot and paste in the base material bump slot. Okay, if we paste it we're losing our fabric bump texture. We don't want that so we're going to mix it. Keep it a submap and paste now. Paste copy and blend, uh, set the mix amount at 50, like this. Right. 
perhaps 50 is a bit too much. Let's try 20. 10 perhaps. Like this. Okay. Now copy this bitmap again. Go to the velvet material. And mix with the bump of velvet material. Paste an instance here. So now both the base and the coat have this texture in their bump slot without losing their original bump textures. So it might seem a bit complicated, but actually it's not nothing like that. You simply mix the textures to keep the original. Okay, notice how the velvet parts are now bumped up nicely. Silk still has its original bump map, velvet has its original bump map, and they are both bumped by this blend amount texture as well. So that's an advanced silk and velvet blend material here. Just gonna reduce the bump amount. Okay. Looks pretty good. Let's try to create a nice material for a towel now. So here's an example of a towel. Notice these strands coming out of it in different directions. So we can use the displacement map to simulate something like that. So I'm going to find a nice, nice photograph I can use to create a texture. So I think this pink one will work well. Okay. View image, copy, open up in Photoshop, create new file and paste. So first let's desaturate it and now let's reduce the size to 500 pixels. Okay, copy everything, increase the canvas size by 100% in both directions and paste. Great. Now I'm going to use the clone stamp tool to close up these seams here. The pattern is very busy and you can't notice anything. This should be fine. Let's offset it to see more seams. Okay, first select all, copy and paste into a new layer. So we get rid of the information that is beyond the boundaries of the image. And now use the offset again. Okay, and here are the seams. Clean them up. And I think this should work just fine. Okay, bring up the levels, Control L, and increase the contrast quite a bit. Okay, now let's save it.
and go back to our 3D Max scene. So let's create a new material, rename to Towel, and assign to the fabric. Okay. Go down to Maps, and let's use our texture in the displacement slot. So here it is. Show in viewport, increase styling to fit your object. So 10 by 10, perhaps 7 by 7 should be enough. And let's start with the displacement set at 1. So this takes a bit to render since it's using displacement, and displacement always takes some time. Okay, so it looks very very blurry and soft. So how can we fix that? Well, we can change the bitmap filtering for, for starters. Go to the bitmap and change the filtering to none. Let's re-render this little region here to see what has changed. So this looks much better. Looks very towel-like. So I think this should work pretty fine. Perhaps let's try displacement at 2. And render the image. So this is a nice fuzzy towel displacement. So we can give it more realism again by using the fall of map in the diffuse slot. So let's set up our fall of map and let's try create a blue towel. So set the first base color as the main color of the towel, so it's something like this, and make the second color a bit lighter and more desaturated. So this will give the appearance of a light fuzzy edge. Okay, change the mix curves like this, adjust the edges lighter, And press OK. So let's see how that looks. OK, notice how the fabric now looks much softer and more realistic. I think the displacement is a bit too much, so maybe, maybe let's change it back to 1. So another thing you can do to make it more interesting is use the wrinkles map we drew earlier. So let's set it up as our bump map. Let's see in viewport. Increase the tiling. Like this. And let's increase the bump amount. Let's try 100 for now. OK. And re-render. So I guess 100 is a bit too low for this particular example. So I'm going to try a higher value, like 300. So here's a nice complete towel material with all the wrinkles. You can use the same technique to create a carpet or rug material. Simply find an appropriate displacement texture, create a tileable version in Photoshop and use it in the displacement slot. So the fall off in the diffuse slot just helps to create the fuzzy, fuzzy look of the fabric. Okay, let's create one more fabric material for this part. Okay, let's check out the CG textures. So 
some fabric and plane. I guess this should work pretty well. I'm going to download the largest image. So open this image in Photoshop. I'm going to crop it like this. Copy. Create a square version of the canvas and paste. Move down. Delete with a hard brush. And merge down. OK. So now I'm going to increase the contrast with the curves tool. Good. Let's use the offset filter to see our seams. Now let's try to fix them with the clone stamp. Send the hardness to maximum. So the pattern is so busy that it will be hard to notice if there is any tiling here. Now to create some nice nice materials for furniture, we're going to create a new layer and overlay a color. For example, green. Okay, copy merged, paste, and adjust with curves. So this type of contrasty fabric is often used in furniture. I'm going to reduce the size to 2000. No need for an extremely large texture for this sort of image. Maybe even one and a half. Okay, save it as PNG. and create a desaturated version for the bump slot. Okay. Create a new weary material, rename to fabric upholstery, and set it up as the diffuse map. Increase the tiling quite a bit. And let's try a quick render. It's a lot easier to create an illusion of fabric if your texture has more color variation and more contrast variation, if it has a strong pattern to it. So 
So it already looks pretty good. We just simply have to add a bump map. So again, set the tiling to 5 and 5. Maybe a bit higher bump value. And re-render. So this is a pretty realistic upholstery fabric. Maybe even too contrasty. We can make it less contrasty by overlaying another layer of color. color. And a nice fabric. If you wish to give it a little fuzzy edge, you can use the fall of map again to do that. Just like in the first material we created in this video. Copy to the second fall of slot. Reduce the value to blend with the white color. And change the curve like this. So just the very edge is lighter. This is a bit too strong. Maybe like this. Okay, so slightly fuzzy edge. Nice bump. Nice diffuse. And that's a basic fabric. Now I'm going to show you how to create a transparent day curtain fabric. So let's look at an example. So here it is. Okay, let's look at it up close. So the main feature of this transparent fabric is the transparency. And notice these folds over here. So you can see that this part that is facing you is more transparent than these parts that are perpendicular to your viewing direction. So to simulate this effect we are going to use the fall of map again. So let's create a new weary material. So first let's set up the color the basic diffuse color to something white. Let's try 220. And now let's try to imitate this fall off of refractions. So go to refract slot and set up a fall off map here. Okay. So this is how it looks now. The edges are transparent and the center is not. We want it to be the other way around. So let's flip the colors like this. Okay. And now let's adjust the color curve. Okay, like this. So notice how these edges are not transparent 
and the center you can see everything right through it. Okay, so let's bring it up a bit so it's not completely transparent. Let's try it like this. Okay, another thing, notice how the background image is not distorted at all. Well, it's distorted only a little bit. So this is because the fabric is very thin and it has no refractive qualities, almost no refractive qualities. So we, we must set our IOR very close to 1. So for example, 1.02. So it will bend the light just slightly, but you will be able to see right through it without a large distortion. So let's assign it to our curtain object and see a quick test render. So the basic idea is working. You can see that these parts are transparent and these edges here are less transparent. But I think the contrast is a bit too strong. So and also notice that there are no transparent shadows coming from the curtain. So we must enable effect shadows over here in the refraction section. Okay, now we'll now we'll have nice shadows and let's adjust the curve a bit. Let's bring this up even more. So it's just slightly transparent. Okay, re-render. Okay, this looks better. So this is a pretty transparent curtain material. So another thing I've noticed in this image is there is a fall off in the diffuse map as well. So these edges, edges that are parallel to your viewing direction, they are lighter. So we're gonna use a very similar fall off map in the diffuse slot, something like we used in our first fabric materials. So let's set up a fall off in the diffuse slot and change the front color to something like like this, uh, darkish gray, well not darkish, quite light, but still gray. And the side color, let's make it white. Okay. Let's adjust the curve a bit. Okay. Let's see how it looks now. Okay, now we have these nice lighter edges going on here. fabric appears to be more more like fabric less like plastic so one more thing we want to do is set up a fabric texture in the refract slot because right now it looks just uh, flat completely flat completely transparent almost like a uh, plastic or something like that so I'll go to refract slot and let's use one of our fabric textures we created earlier. So textures, fabrics, and let's try this fabric to bump. Open up. So look at this map. What we want, we want these dark parts to be transparent and the white parts to be uh, not transparent. So to do that we need to invert our output because the refraction uh, works like this. The lighter the color the more refractive it is. So if we invert the light parts will be refracting and the dark parts or the threads will not be refracting. Okay. Okay, this should work fine. Let's see it on our model. It looks like we need to increase the tiling. Let's try 10 by 10, perhaps even 20 by 20. Okay, so now let's copy the same map to the second fall of slot. So for this dark color we want want there to be just a hint of this texture. 
so let's blend it at 20 and for this lighter part we want it stronger so let's make it a 70 we render for texture is so small well you might want to change the bitmap filtering to none because it blurs the texture and you can't see the detail so I'm gonna try none and re-render so I guess it's too strong let's go back to our fall of map and set it up as 20 for the light material and one for the dark re-render Okay, now, there, now there's just a hint of this texture here. You can adjust these values if you want a more contrasty pattern. You can increase the light, the light color texture to 50. And for a smoother fabric, you can reduce it even more. So this really depends on the fabric type you're trying to simulate. Okay. So let's leave it at 20 for now. And another thing that transparent curtains might have is translucency. So I'm going to show you an example. Look here. Look how the light is scattering throughout the fabric. This does not look like that. So we can try to emulate this translucency by using V-Ray two-sided material. So let's copy this material first, rename it to curtain translucent. to the object and let's change the material type to V-Ray two-sided. Keep the old material as sub-material, so this way we keep our old material and simply add the translucency quality to it. So here's the translucency color, let's try it with the default value. And notice how the whole curtain is now much brighter and the light is scattering throughout it. Okay, if you want this translucency to be weaker, you simply change this color over here. Let's make it darker and see the result. So that's a basic translucent curtain material. If you do this step by step, there's not much difficulty here. I think the result is pretty nice. Okay, so that's another curtain material. And let's create a lace curtain now. So first thing we need is a lace texture. So I will find some on the cgtextures.com fabric slice trims I'm gonna try this one so I'll open it up in the Photoshop and here it is so first let's try to make it tileable okay let's create a new image set up our sizes 4000 by 4000 and paste. Okay. So now I'm going to try and find a basic tiling element here. So it looks like the image is rotated a little bit. Let's try to straighten it. So we can use the ruler tool to do that.
Let's draw from here to here. Okay, cancel that. From here to here. This should be a straight line. Press straighten. Okay. Let's try to select again. Like this. Okay, copy. Let's hide this layer. Paste. And duplicate the layer. So it looks like it's tiling horizontally. Let's try vertically. And tiling nicely as well. So if you have a straight straight image, it's easy to select a tiling element. And you don't even have to adjust the seams. At least I can't seem to see I can't see the seams here. So let's create a new file, paste our texture, so this is a tiling element, and adjust the levels. So for lace you want a very dark, very dark black color and completely white, white color. So go to the levels adjustment, select this black color picker here and select the lightest of the black colors in this image. zoom in so it's easier like this so that's our black color and do the same for white like this okay now desaturate the image and let's save it Fabrics and lace. So I'm going to create a new V-Ray material. I'm just going to duplicate this first curtain here and rename it to lace. Okay, so I'm going to leave everything as it is and assign the lace texture to the opacity slot. Okay, looks like we need to invert this image. Perhaps let's overlay this fabric bump as well, so these parts are not as flat. So I pasted it in a new layer, and I'm going to adjust the size to fit this image exactly. Let's see some different blending modes. So I want it to be visible only in the white parts. So for example, I'm going to use the magic wand tool to select the white parts from this layer. Go to this layer and press the mask button. Okay like this. 
So this way the texture is a bit more realistic and the flat white areas have some more variation to them. So let's look at it again. And here it is. Okay, another thing we want to do is copy this lice texture. Copy and paste in the bomb slot. So I think this might be a bit too small. So I will decrease the tiling to 10 by 10 or even to 6 by 6. Okay, let's see how it looks. So it looks like I was wrong. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's disable invert. This might be too smooth. Let's change the bit of filtering to some area. closer. So close up you can see the details pretty well. It looks pretty much like lice. Okay, so that's it for fabrics.